Summer by Fran Pratt. God, we thank you for the turning the earth toward the sun. As the days and the light are long, endless, full of possibility, as growing things are awake and progressing, making progress, as our plot on the planet faces the sun, our star. So we turn ourselves toward the sun. Following the way of Christ. Following the way of love. Growing to maturity. Spreading seeds of good news to all. Please join in our gathering hymn number 887. This is my song. Let's pray. God of all nations and ages, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory. You invite us to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our nation a zeal for justice and the strength for forbearance, and that we may use our liberty in accordance to your gracious will. We ask this on a day of celebration, a day of hope for a nation made free. We ask this in the name of the one who welcomes all to be free indeed. Inspire us to live and worship in your freedom and for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Let the peace be with you. And also with you. Let's just take a moment to share our peace with our neighbor, however you feel comfortable.
The scripture reading is taken from John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of the Lord. All right, I'd like to invite the children up. They are coming, I see them. <laughs> Good morning, you can come sit right up here. All right, so in the lesson we just heard, the truth will set you free. Now, in children's literature, there is a character whose whole journey, whose whole story revolves around him telling the truth and what happens when he doesn't tell the truth. Do you know who that might be? No? Have you ever heard? I hear it. I hear some people saying it. Have you ever heard of a story about a wooden puppet whose nose grows? Oh, Pinocchio. Pinocchio, yes. So in the story... Pinocchio is a wooden puppet and he wants to be a real boy and the blue fairy says she will if he is truthful and if he's brave and if he's selfless. So in the story he has someone to help guide him. Do you know who his name? No. You don't know? Do you know his name? You never seen a red? Have you ever heard the name Jiminy Cricket? No. no? Well that's his conscience in the story, and ironically, his initials are JC. Just dawned on me this morning that there's a, there's a parallel there. So his job is to help Pinocchio be brave and truthful and selfless. But Pinocchio meets some kids who are doing some bad things and he starts telling lies and his nose grows. Now we're lucky that when we tell a lie or if we tell a lie, our nose doesn't grow. That would be Kind of scary, right? But something does happen to us. Our heart gets heavy and it feels caged. And that's why in the scripture, Jesus says, the truth will set you free. So when you tell a lie or a fib and then you tell the truth, you feel so much better about it. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us your son. And just like Jiminy Cricket helped Pinocchio, have Jesus help us be brave, truthful, and selfless. In your name we pray. Amen. Greetings this morning in the name of our Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we come together to celebrate and to be thankful for many things. We celebrate and are thankful for vaccinations. Our nation's first female vice president, access to the internet, gatherings together in person, our family, our friends, and our health and the enjoyment of the free pleasures of life. Today, our country comes together to celebrate the 4th of July, the birth of American independence, commemorating the day in 1776 that our nation declared itself to be an independent nation, no longer a colony of England. Celebrations were held, celebrations were held and continue today symbolizing the end of the monarchy's hold on America and the triumph of liberty. 
Today, in 2021, we celebrate Juneteenth as becoming a federal holiday. On June 17th, Juneteenth is also known as Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, and Black Independence Day. On June 17th, we honor and commemorate the emancipation of African American slaves in 1863. I heard a pastor tell this story from the late 1850s. There was a successful businessman from England visiting St. Louis. As he walked around the city, he came upon a slave auction on the steps of the courthouse. Among those chained, chained to be auctioned, the businessman noticed one man, much bigger and stronger than the others. Unlike the rest, the man held his head upright, looking straight ahead as still as a statue. And a statue he might have been, except for the great tears that raced shiny rivers down his face. When the man stood to be sold, the price quickly went to $1,000. The Englishman called out, $1,500, and all the other bids stopped. After paying the accountant, the businessman followed a few paces behind his new property. And after they turned the corner and were out of sight of the crowd, the Englishman turned to the man and said, you can go now, you are free. The other man stood still, gazing at him through narrowed eyes, he did not seem to understand. I said, you are free. I have bought your freedom. You are no longer a slave. This brings forth a very, very powerful image of being released from bondage. The folks following Jesus didn't quite get it, and sometimes we struggle with it today. And we hear these same words in Jesus. You are free. I have bought your freedom. You are no longer a slave. It is a true freedom that through Christ that breaks us from every stronghold. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What is the truth? Every generation that's ever lived wants to know why and what is true. The good news is that the truth is found in a person, in a promise, and in a plan revealed and set forth and made complete in Jesus Christ. The word of truth that leads to salvation is found in the words of the Lord printed in the pages of the Bible. Jesus is the word that leads to truth. When we know the truth, it is the truth that liberates us, free from sin, free from condemnation, and free from death. So then, what is the freedom in Christ? In God, we find the basis for our national freedoms, our physical freedoms, and our spiritual freedom. It is found in God's one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus speaks of this in Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set liberty to all who are oppressed. Jesus revealed the reason why God had sent him into the word, world, to bring liberty and freedom. Jesus came because we could never be good enough to do it without him. He paid the ultimate price for our sins through his death to give us freedom. I ask you today to think about what difference has Jesus made in your life? Asking this question to a bunch of seminary students 
is like asking our children what they want to be when they grow up. We are so eager and excited to share how Jesus has made an impact in our lives and to share this good news of freedom in Christ. So here are a few of the responses that I would like to share with you. Because I cannot do it on my own. Jesus is the very essence of God, enriched in our very human experience, journeying with us, giving life, meaning, and hope. The grace I receive through Jesus, I always feel held, even in my darkest moments. I know who I am and whose I am, an imperfect person held by Christ in God. Or the spark of God is in my DNA. God is in all of our DNAs. Jesus showed me that I was not a mistake and let me know I was worth it. Jesus showed me community. Jesus showed me love. Jesus saved me. Jesus loves me simply because I exist. And finally, I am free and I have an everlasting life which no one can take away from me. Through faith in Jesus, I have grace, and because of this grace, I have abundant life. Possibly you or your neighbor can relate to one of these statements, or maybe you need to hear the message of liberty and freedom that we receive in Jesus. Jesus gave us this freedom so that we can all be saved that we can all have a new life, free of bondage in the hope and joy found in Jesus. The freedom in Jesus is an easy message to share simply by sharing our faith stories with others. No matter how many freedoms our nation can give us, it cannot give us the freedom from shame or guilt brought upon us by our bondages. God forgives us, not because we deserve it or have done enough good to earn it. God loves us for one reason and one reason only. God loves us. It is the ultimate joy of living in the freedom of the Savior. You, we, and I are given opportunities time and time again to live out our call to be faithful to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, all our souls and minds, and our neighbors as ourselves. Step by step, we are called to walk in the way of faith, always remembering to remain immersed in the word. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth, will set you free. So if the sun makes you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. I'm 
I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship There's a love that lives in me For you, Lord, my Savior, King Who breaks the sin that's binding to a place of freedom I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song, like I am unashamed, I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship, I've come to worship. Bring me peace, don't wash me clean like Come falling down. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed. I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. Please stand and join me in our statement of belief printed in your bulletins. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your mercy, you love all that you have made and forget none. We bring before you this day the cries of the world and the sighs of our hearts with deep gratitude for many blessings, trusting in your continued care for your whole creation, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for leaders of the nations, as they face decisions that affect the lives of millions of people, this earth, and the course of our history together, that their deliberations might be tempered with truth, justice, and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. for all who seek deliverance from affliction, illness, suffering, persecution, and trials, 
that you might be their source of strength and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and for those who care for them. We pray for the sick and for those who are in special need of our prayers at this time, including Winnie Nelson for continued healing, strength, and recovery from surgery, for the IDs' safe return and that they may return to us rested and rejuvenated. For intern Amy, and for all who worked to fill the gaps while the IDs vacation. And for all those we lift up silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, for those tempted or t tried by weakness, that your grace might be their strength. For those that are alone or saddened in the midst of the joy of others, that they might find friendship in your community and comfort in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Compassionate God, Hear our prayers and grant them according to your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in our closing song, number 888, O oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
And now to receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. to see you, Laura, and Don, and the Levins, too. Glad you could join us today. Have a blessed week.